What is going on, my fellow aspiring Olympic ice skaters and snowboarders? It's your boy, your favorite. Actually, you know, doing all of these weird intros has really made me stop and think about it and look at myself and ask, you know, what am I? Who am I really? Anyway, today we're going to be talking about a tech that is relatively new called the Pulsewood slash the Snowballing Ice Skating. It's got like a bunch of different names. The person that found its name is Pulsewood. So for the time being, I'm probably going to refer to it as that for the majority of this video. We're still learning a lot about this technique. It's very underutilized, it's very new, and um... Uh, you know, I tend to not like making videos about something if I don't know how it works, so I'm going to say as a disclaimer right off the bat, A, there might be some things that I don't know that actually are known already, and B, we might find things that completely change how this stuff works out and this could end up being irrelevant later on. But for right now, I'm going to go over everything to my knowledge that I know about this tech and how it works. So right now, there's two applications to this tech. One is to preserve a speed ghost for a lot longer, and two is to be able to go through off-roads without losing speed as quickly. So speed ghosts have been in the game for very, very long time. They're definitely not a new tech found. But for the sake of it, if you haven't heard of them and don't know how they work, I'm gonna give a quick rundown on them. Personally, I think it'd be better if we referred to these as reserve cancels because we call like three different things in this game speed ghosts, even if they're fundamentally different. But uh, whatever. So a reserve cancel speed ghost requires two things. One, and most importantly, is a really big downhill that forces you to get downhill speeds. Second is the ability for you to come into it with fire, but land without fire. This is typically why it's called a reserve cancel, because generally you're going to tap a wall while mid-air, so you kill your fire. Upon doing so, when you land, you're actually going to preserve that downhill speed for really whatever reason nobody actually really knows. Uh, and then to continue it normally, what we used to do would just be hop periodically and minimize the amount of time that you are driving flat on the ground. Because every frame that you were on the ground, you were losing speed. Also to note, if you ever got a hang time turbo, ran over a boost pad, or, you know, for whatever reason, got a mini turbo, uh, you would immediately lose all of that speed and drop down to the speed of whatever boost mini turbo that you got. So it was always imperative to avoid boost pads or getting a hang time turbo. That is the framework of the big pulse wood text that you're going to see mostly taking over Ruse Tubes and to an extent Electron Avenue and Mega Mix Mania. These reserve cancel speed ghosts exist on a ton of tracks, but for what it's worth, I'm only going to really be going over Electron Avenue and Ruse Tubes in this video, and I'm going to encourage everybody else to kind and it just be creative with the tech because, you know, I'm, I would like to think that people can recognize downhill speeds and stuff like that. So in order for me to actually explain how the Pulsewood tech works really well on speed ghosts, I'm actually going to show you how it works on off-roads instead because it kind of shows a little bit better what's going on. So I'm going to show clips from two different tracks where normally if you just drove on the ground you would lose speed really rapidly, but Strangely enough, you're going to see that I don't really lose speed at all while using the Pulsewood tech. Basically what's going on here is that while you're using Pulsewood, you end up losing speed at a much more gradual rate than you normally should. So it allows me to basically jump off of this first shortcut on Coco Park without having lost any speed at all while going up that hill. Similarly on Dragon Mines, it allows me to drive all the way up the mineshaft section without losing basically basically any speed at all. So, similarly speaking for the reserve cancel speed ghosts, basically you get a regular speed ghost, land into the pulse with tech, and you gradually lose the speed rather than it rapidly decreasing for every frame that you're on the road. So now you're gonna say, okay cool, you've explained how it works, but tell us how the hell to do it. So the first track that I actually learned how to do this on, at least to an extent to start getting it to pull off, 
was actually on Electron Avenue. I did Electron Avenue because, in my opinion, the Speed Ghost is probably the easiest to initiate there if you're unfamiliar with how to do them. It's not the easiest to, you know, really maintain it without hitting a wall or whatever. You know, it's very hard to control, but at the very least, it's easier, in my opinion, to initiate the Speed Ghost if you're really unfamiliar with the ones on Ruse Tubes, for instance. So right off the bat, basically what you do is, similar with a speed ghost, you just drive off of the ramp, no jump, and you land on the side where the little level geometry will take away your fire and then push you back onto the road. While you are losing fire, before you touch the road, you're going to want to hit four buttons. You're going to want to hit the square button, the X button, and then down, and then the direction you want to turn. In this instance, we're going to obviously be turning left. And of course, if it isn't obvious, you need to continue holding down all of those buttons while on the ground. Now, if you tried this after me showing that alone, uh, you probably noticed either one of two things. A, that it's impossible to control if you hold all four of those buttons down, or B, that the speed immediately went away the moment you tried to turn right afterwards. That's where the difficult part comes into play. See, you need to be holding down at least square down and a turning direction at all times with absolutely zero frames with no turning direction being put in. The moment that there is no turn direction put in is when all of that speed goes away. Unfortunately, by nature of a standard D-pad or an analog stick, it is literally impossible to hit both turning directions at the exact same time. Go ahead and try pushing both left and right on your D-pad at the same time and see what happens you can't. So from there, you're kind of left with a couple options. One, if you want to be able to make those turns and switch between left and right, you can actually hop in the air and then switch directions. And as long as you're landing into that same four button combo, whether it's to the left or to the right, while you're on the ground, it'll maintain that speed. This still becomes relatively difficult to control, obviously, because again, you need to be making sure that you're landing into that combo no matter what. Now, technically, you can still do this on ground just by doing frame-perfect changes of direction. This means that on the beginning of frame one, for instance, you would be holding left, down, square, and X, and then on the beginning of frame two, when the inputs are being sent to the game, you would be holding down, right, square, and X. Of course, this is very difficult to pull off because it requires a lot of fast movements. But there is a second option. Now, the second part is a little bit more on the controversial side. So when I uploaded the Ruse Tubes time trial video, I made sure to show the gamepad on screen so people could at least see the inputs I was using. It confused some people, and you know, some people pointed out the fact that I was holding R2 the entire time and didn't understand why. However, one person did actually notice it and figured out how I was turning left and right without ever actually hitting the right button on my D pad. See, if you remember, I just said that the main problem with the D-pad is that you can't push the left and the right at the exact same time because they're on the opposite sides of the pad and you can't push both at the same time. Physically impossible. However, if you remap your buttons, you can change everything up so you can actually hit both at the same time. So for all intents and purposes, I'm going to go over my layout, but of course you can try whatever else that you think will work best for you. Keep in mind that the main important thing is that you need to find a way to be able to hit both in the left and the right at the same time to be able to transition between the two without any frames of input being neutral. So my inputs have the left button on the D-pad still being the left button. The down button on the D-pad actually is going to be changed to the right D-pad. So if I want to turn right, I need to hit down on the D-pad. This means that I'm basically just keeping my hands on the diagonal left and down of the d-pad and just shifting my thumb when I need to change directions. And then R2 is actually being changed to the down button on the d-pad. And because there's no real downside to holding down the entire time, that is why I'm just holding down the R2 button throughout the entire run. So here's some extra little things that I've found out that I think should be noted. One, you can actually hit turbo pads now with using this tech. It doesn't immediately kill your speed at all, it actually has 
well, basically no effect whatsoever, except, you know, you get a little bit of a speed boost. Two, it's similar to regular speed ghosts in the regard, though, where if you get a mini turbo or, you know, a hang time boost, you will lose all of that speed basically instantly. However, there's a little asterisk to that. With off-road sections, you won't actually lose that speed until you get off of the off-road. So for instance on Ruse Tubes, you know, you'll see that I actually do a jump on the end of lap 3 into the off-road section, and I don't end up losing the fire. But I don't do a jump on lap 1 and 2, and this is because if I were to jump and get a hang time boost, as soon as I would actually get off of that dirt patch, I would be dropping back down to normal speed. Three, and this is the reason why I think some people refer to this as a snowball tech is you can actually begin to chain the speed ghosts together if you have enough speed and you can carry it throughout the whole thing. This is basically what's going on in Roost Tubes. You get the really big speed ghost and carry that speed all the way to the beginning of the lap into the first one. To note though, obviously you are still losing speed, but it's just at a slower rate than normal. So if you get a kind of bad speed ghost, which is what happens if you run into the wall to kill your fire at a really bad angle, you're gonna not be able to carry it as well into the next lap or maybe into the next speed ghost or in general you just won't be able to hold it as long. But more importantly the reason I bring this up is that no matter how good of a speed ghost that you get and how well you are maintaining it you will eventually run out of that speed and be back down to normal. Which is why that in the Ruse Tubes run you see that every lap you go for a jump onto the first boost pad because no matter what, at that point, you usually run out of speed. Now that brings me up to the next thing that I want to talk about, which is a little bit more speculation, but it's uh, basically when you lose all of this speed while midair. There is one of two things that I think is possibly happening, and I think the more likely one is actually just, in general, if you're in the air for too long, whether it's because you actually jumped or not, the speed just kind of goes away. So that first big mound on Ruse Tubes before the turbo pad, even if you don't jump off of it, you end up being in the air for a really long time. And by the time you land, that speed most likely has gone away. And Better yet is at the end of Ruse Tubes, after the last turbo pad, if you're going really fast and you fly off of that ramp, even if you don't jump, there is a possibility that your speed will just disappear. The other possibility involves a uh, fire that you would get from the turbo pad, but I haven't really tested it enough to really know for sure if that's the cause of it. So one thing that I've kind of observed is if you get a really good speed ghost and you actually run over the turbo pad at the end and that fire doesn't quite die out by the time that you drive off of that ramp going into the little dirt section is your fire from that turbo pad tends to die out while you're mid-air and then your cart just kind of stops and drops like a rock and all of your speed just kind of disappears. So it's possible it could have something to do with the turbo slash fire uh, being kind of like a jet propulsion and it just going away or it could just be because you're in the air for too long. That's something that'll probably get explored and figured out at some point and you know we'll have a more concrete answer. Also I haven't mentioned this part yet but if you need to end up taking a tighter turn while doing the pulse with tech you can actually let off of the gas for a brief moment moment and then go back onto it and basically when you're letting off of the gas you're doing a grounded u-turn i think you actually do lose a little bit of speed while you're doing grounded u-turns but it's hard to really tell so just gotta be careful with that. So with that, nothing else really comes to mind as far as stuff that I figured out that's kind of important to mention while I was messing with the tech and learning about it. So I guess from here we'll just kind of go into a summary. First and foremost, the pulse with tech is performed by pressing the brake, the gas, a turning direction, and then the down button, whether it's down on the analog or down on the D-pad. Obviously, it's just a reverse input. Secondly, the idea behind the pulse with tech is that it reduces the deceleration of your cart when you are driving either uphill or on the off-road. You still do lose speed, but it's at a slower rate. This is then used to either drive across off-road sections or to maintain speed ghosts to make them last 
much, much longer. Third, of course, that speed is canceled if you get a mini turbo or a hang time boost at all. Fourth is that if you need to make an adjustment, you can either do a quick grounded U-turn if it's going to be the same direction, or if you need to change directions, you need to have zero frames of neutral inputs. That means on one frame you go from being left and then the next frame you have to have the right input held. This can be mitigated by remapping buttons. I'm not about to walk you through how to do remapping buttons in PS4 is in the accessibility options. Here again is a screenshot of the rebinds that I am using, but you are free to try whatever you want. I have been told on Xbox that you cannot remap the left and right trigger. I don't really use my Xbox One at all, so I cannot confirm or deny. But the main idea when you go into remapping the buttons is that you need to find a way that you can push both directions left and right at the same time so you can transition to them smoothly without having a single frame of input being neither. So that is why in my case I have the left button to turn left and then the down button to turn right so I can seamlessly just kind of wiggle between the two when I need to change directions. And then the down button is actually just mapped to my R2 and just hold it the entire time. All that being said, I think that is all of the important bullet points to understand this tech. Hopefully it's as thorough as possible with the current knowledge of the tech. I'm not really here to discuss if I think that the tech is good or if it should be allowed or anything like that, but I'm open to let you guys discuss it in the comments section below. Do you guys think that this is just a broken tech and that Beanox should come out of the woodwork and make sure it gets fixed? Do you think it should be banned from time trial leaderboards? You know, feel free to share your thoughts below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something and I will see you guys next time. Oh my god, that's so fast. Holy shit.